Hey there everybody, it's Wayne D. Welcome to the website. It's WayneD.com. And today I wanted to look at the swing of Tom Hoagie. He's been playing some really good golf lately. Tom's got a had an interesting career. He kind of went on and off the tour, finishing right around the top 125, but losing his card a couple times, getting it back in Corn Ferry Finals. But the last two years, he's really become a solid player. Top uh, right around 50th in the FedEx Cup, ending up both years uh, 21 and uh, 20. And then this year he's got he's got a, a first and a second. He's already made over three million bucks. So watching his swing, it's an interesting swing because it doesn't have that that perfect transition at the top. And, and you see some of this these days, and it just goes to show you what a lot of hard work and and. Uh, getting into a groove will do you know some good timing so as we watch this swing the camera's a little high but uh, it's a good angle from behind and a nice stable camera so we can actually uh, draw a few lines here and what we're going to see in general one of the things that I noticed right away in his swing you know, since I call my website pivot compression when I see a guy lowering in the backswing as much as Hoagie does it always makes me feel good <laughs> especially after all the knuckleheads on TV spent so many years bad mouthing the idea of compressing or lowering into the ground saying it was going to get you stuck and all this nonsense so let's watch from uh, let's watch from down the line first because we're going to see this is a, uh, as I've said before, there's there's a number of ways that guys uh, get into the ground. Some of them do it all in the backswing. Some of them do half and half like a tiger, and some of them do it all in the forward swing like a McElroy. But here we see Hoagie, he's doing it all in the backswing. And as he starts forward, you don't see any of the second drop down that you see in most guys so it's kind of interesting to watch the in the in the setup he likes those hands nice and and low so you get the arms hanging right down underneath his shoulders with a pretty good amount of tilt in the spine now he's going to start this thing back with a he's going to trigger it with a push so the handle goes down a little bit and he keeps the club outside his hands a little hard to see the face here but you can imagine it's it's not super open but a lot of rotation up here to get it what it looks like about there and then up here where most guys when they get the when they get the shaft planed like this will kind of catch it with their body and it won't the club head won't go in uh, the direction of the head at all but as you can see here that is not the case so we got a little bit of a lifting action with the right arm looks like the right hand is a little bit loose on the club and we're going to go from kind of on plane to crossing and then the first move down that clubs a little bit on the steep side now if this was someone that I was teaching that wasn't doing as well I would suggest trying to fix that but obviously in this case that wouldn't be very smart and uh, you know that's the nature of it you never really know what keeps somebody from being better and sometimes it's not a technique thing like this 
So what we'll see here, if we say that the top of the swing is here, is we're going to see the hands definitely work out toward the ball, not drop behind. That's a good thing. So he's going to flatten the shaft, but not too abruptly. So he's going to keep it out on his left arm a little bit and come in much higher than he started. So here are the hands on the approach, and there they were at a dress. So this doesn't lend itself to the feeling of balance and uh, how the swing would go back and forth the same way. He's a he's just a ball hitter. So this is coming in high, but look where the club head is, it's right on his hands. So it's like perfect. And then you can see it, he's going to go down and left at it. And if you look at his stats, he's a great iron player. His strokes gained uh, approach is like fifth on tour. But there's that little wiggle move. I'll show you some other swings. So you say, you know, what, how does that work? What's the key? Well, the key is, is the rhythm. So as you watch that, you can see how that's, you would have to describe that as kind of a fast swing with a hard catch. Puts a lot of stress on the shaft at the top. So when he gets into a groove, he stripes it. So got an interesting face on here. This is actually a pretty good angle. So from face on we can also see that along with the the downwardness we have a rightward movement too. So from behind you can't see it obviously go whether or not he's leaning left or right. You just see he's going down. So here we see that also. But you also see he's got at least half a head of movement to the right. And as he does that, you'll see his hips load into the center. So his hips are loading. Here he gets more angle in that right leg at the top. And then he's got just a tiny little lean. And again, if I look at that right hand, I see, you know, it just a little opening here. But that lean puts his head back right where it came from. Ball positions, nice ball position, not, not too far back. So that rightward movement allows him to really move laterally into it. So you can see that's a pretty good amount of lower body movement to the left. Plenty of drag on the club. And then, of course, the, the key to the iron ball striking is going to be that position right here. So you can see that left wrist inflection past the ball, the club in line with the left arm. Again, this one's in regular speed, so you can kind of see the, the pace of it. All business. None of this slow backswing stuff. Now his grip looked a little weaker here from this face on. I had another one where the grip looked a little stronger. Let's check that one out. Get this one. So you can see that grip looks into extension in the left, right. Looks up the right arm. So it's a little bit on the strong side. It's a little older swing. But you can see he really digs that left shoulder down and really gets his, himself really deep into the ground. The uh, 
PGA Tour stats say that he's 6-1. I think it was 6-1 or 6-2 and 175. And if he's 175, then that must have been after he had the flu for like two weeks because there's no way he weighs 175 pounds. <laughs> Looks more like 195. I mean, he's a big guy. He's strong. Uh, you can see it's a, it's got a nice nice action, nice whipping action. So there's a couple of other swings. So on the shorter wedge shot, you don't really see the shaft, you don't really see the club head move too much. So that makes that swing look a little more conventional. A little knockdown wedge. This is obviously a pebble where he won. It's another short one. It's up the hill. Again. Doesn't have that club head moving over his head. He's got it into a nice position. He's got the hands coming out and the shaft shallowing. And look at that left wrist turn down here. Let's make that a little bigger. So if you're watching this, this is something to, if you don't do it, you kind of have to try. If that left wrist doesn't turn down as you're rotating into impact, then it's, it's going to be a throw release. It's not going to strike it as well. Now there are guys that, that can do that, that can come at it with the wrist a little bit more cupped and extension. So that's a pretty good shot here at the end of the tournament on 16. <laughs> so there's that little move, but he's got the shaft pretty stable there. When we go into the, the longer shots, saw that one. So here's a driver. Check this one out. So that's where you can really see it with that driver. And he's not a bad driver. He averages just under 300. He hits 60 percent of his fairways. But you can kind of see why his iron play is the strength of his game because the, he does not have that little extra move at the top. Anyway, that's Tom Hoagie, pretty cool swing, and uh, he's doing some nice golfing.